Hi everyone, good morning. So, welcome to the Startup Club's uh, pitch workshop. So, today we'll have a pitch uh, presented by the founders of uh, Car Extreme, and uh, we'll have Amiya reviewing the pitch. And uh, the whole session will be an hour long. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite Amiya to set, set the context. And once you guys, um, once Amiya set the context, uh, Kiran and Yash, you guys can go ahead. Okay. Hi guys, uh, this is Amiya here. Uh, let me just quickly introduce myself. Um, so I've got about 15 years of experience doing various things. I've been a consultant with uh, Cisco. I've been a product manager uh, with Cisco and Amazon. I've um, been an entrepreneur for about three years. Um, I've been doing angel investment for about eight years now. I'm also a startup mentor uh, with uh, Vadwani Foundation with NASCOM. And uh, currently, I'm a general partner with a VC firm called Ayartha Capital. So that's my quick introduction uh, in terms of the uh, session today. What we are going to do is uh, uh, the promoters of Car Extreme, please go ahead, uh, introduce yourself, and then take it over to the pitch. Try and keep it to 10, 15 minutes um, so that that way we will have more time to talk about the pitch and I'd be able to give you proper feedback on that. Um, then we'll take it from there. Hey guys, uh, this is Kiran Yarapudu, uh, founder of uh, Car Extreme. Hi, this is Yash Gupta, co-founder of Car Extreme. Uh, Car Extreme is like a one-stop solution for car sales and services. And uh, we have uh, put a solution in the marketplace. There are only a few uh, uh, businesses who are dealing with uh, like a, a used car market. So, so like a this one is let's say okay. So uh, the used car market in India is growing pretty big, and uh, like four point four million units are sold in a uh, used car market currently, and uh, it is still growing, and it is beating uh, all the other countries and it is going at 17.7 percent which is like a pretty big market and uh, it's going from 25 billion dollars to 100 billion dollars if you see it uh, in the on the road like uh, uh, previously like a 20, 10 to 15 years back they, we used to see only a few cars on the roads nowadays it's like a it's packed with cars and everybody because of the environmental changes economical changes uh, the everybody wants to grow get into the you know, car and uh, that is moving in a fast pace and we want to uh, uh, bring a unique solution uh, to this particular market but at the same time this particular market has a lot of problems like it is totally unorganized for example like uh, if you want to sell any person like uh, santosh if you want to sell your car uh, it is uh, it is very difficult uh, uh, without losing a, a commissions high commissions to the middleman and uh, bringing the transparency to the like uh, to the buyers and uh, uh, and there is a low trust to go with this particular thing, buying a car itself, like uh, the buyers are going with the low trust and uh, trying to gain that uh, during the, every process. So this is like totally unorganized and uh, we there is no quick solution for this. And when it comes to like uh, the partners, uh, everybody in the car world is uh, struggling, like uh, either it can be a sellers, dealers, uh, or buyers who are trying to buy the uh, services or like uh, uh, buyers who are trying to buy the cars. And uh, when it comes to the services, like if you want to go to the service and uh, try to get uh, the good quality services or finding out everybody is doing the research and trying to find out what is going on with the service providers and uh, trying to, in order to get the connection itself, like uh, it's, it's taking a lot of journey for every, uh, service seeker and uh, the service provider is also like in the same journey like he is wants to bring it to the middle of the road uh, put it on the uh, prime real estate and try to advertise himself and all so these are the common struggles that which we have observed and we we have we what we have done is like is there a way where we can put uh, the technical solutions uh, uh, into the like a close to this uh, audience so we can bring a solution to uh, solution to the, all the people. 
so that's how this car extreme has brought, brought into the life and uh, uh, this is a one stop ecosystem for entire used car or pre owned car markets and uh, we have taken the problems put it into the car extreme prism and uh, try to uh, make uh, the technical solutions and convert these problems into the solutions and uh, you can see it on the uh, like uh, here like <laughs> it's uh, organized unorganized we have changed it into the organized and uh, there there is a very like a uh, no interest in this particular uh, like a uh, uh, in the market and also like uh, the seller trying to sell his own car uh, uh, the buyers are shown not showing any interest and uh, the turnaround time to sell the car is very high so the sellers are trying turning out getting onto the dealers or a middle person and uh, try to like these are the common no transparency no value added service and uh, less educated people also getting into like a uh, cars and they are also getting selling the cars and all so without losing all this uh, like uh, any of uh, these problems uh, all these problems we are converted that into like a uh, uh, benefits and solutions mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, yeah go like ahead we have introduced multiple uh, like uh, futures to in order to get these things like Let's say if you're buying a car, like if you're a seller, you're selling your car. Once you a buyer shows interest in your car, he might lose interest in your car later. Like so he won't catch you up with up on the <clears throat> car. He might find a different car. And you also, as a seller, you will also forget. Like okay, I would I wanted to sell my car quickly, but as of this buyer is not interested. I I think so. What Car Extreme does is it makes sure it closes the deal by itself. So you and buyer, like seller and buyer, one person and the person should not be in contact. But our Car Extreme will be doing by itself using bots, using calls, using uh like a, a, a scan like we have multiple <clears throat> operations which make sure the deal gets closed down in such a way that even if user interaction is not there human interaction is not there the car extreme will take care of it and we have like multiple uh players in our platform we are not just providing buying selling which other companies are also doing we are in uh, we are in uh, going all way like we have we are trying to make sure a car gets bought, it gets sold. Uh, a single, like a private person can sell a car. I mean, normal person can sell their car as well as dealers across the cities, like who are who having, who are having thousands of inventory or hundreds of inventory and their car are still there, like they are not getting sold. So we are making sure their car gets sold. And there's, we are introducing, we also have insurance. If someone needs insurance and we have uh, like fire, uh, loans as well. So what we are trying, and so the, what we are introducing is the main part, which is services part. So let's say like services, like let's say there are uh, services nearby your roads, like we want to bring them online so that uh, you can get service from anywhere, anytime uh, across the city or wherever you live. So yeah. that's our motto. And so yeah. in short, like a pre-sales uh, car extreme takes care about our pre-sales services and post-sale services and leave uh, the buyers and sellers only try to interact, uh, make uh, the tools available so that uh, they can do the transaction. And uh, uh, it's uh, it's easy process. We are in uh, the technology is brought for their needs and uh, they can do the, all the business in the WhatsApp and we will go uh, the journey of uh, how it can be achieved. Okay, yeah. let's go. So there, there are different partners that uh, the in this particular whole ecosystem, like uh, uh, the buyers, sellers, uh, loan providers, uh, the auctions, the service providers and service seekers, insurances, like uh, we all take care about the entire uh, the car world from where the uh, individual person who is sitting in his uh, uh, house and wants to sell his car, we will take it for the moment he sends out a WhatsApp message, we will take care from there and uh, try to close that particular deal with the lowest cost and lowest uh, like, uh, <laughs> commissions, no commissions, and uh, uh, try to bring the maximum value out of it. And uh, this is what we are doing. And uh, we are connecting all the parties uh, across uh, this ecosystem. Yeah. So let's uh, 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 Ash, take yeah. the journey. So the, what we are trying to show right now is the journey of individual users, like what they can do to uh, sell their car quickly. So as a seller, I, uh, we can upload, like traditionally, you can go to an app, download our app, and you can upload the car from there, Okay, which is like other uh, app companies. But what we have distinguished ourselves is basically, you can upload your car from WhatsApp. You just need to send a message in this format. 
uh, sorry, in this format, and then you just send the images. It will be up online. Up, uh, it will be live by itself in a matter of two two minutes or something. Okay, and with the images. So your car is just one message away to get sold, and it will be uh, going to a marketplace, and users can come, and you can see like we have multiple. AI bots like we have follow up bot, we have a WhatsApp bot, we have the like a, a scan bot, we have voice bot, we have all the bots that we can uh, like we had to make sure your car gets sold. Okay, and every time you get update, you will get update on app, a WhatsApp, uh, all the across the places. So you make sure that you are aware of what is happening with your car. Okay, and then we also have AI, AI assist. Like this is all AI assist. The whatever the boss bots are, this is all AI integrated, and uh, they are taking care of you, uh, our seller, based on that. Okay, and then post sale process, we also provide like as we said, loan verified. We make sure buyer is well, loan approved. We make sure buyer is verified and the RC transfer happening. So this is seller journey, quick, uh, easy, and pretty straightforward. Same for buyers, let's come to buyers. So uh, you can, as a normal user, you can go to app, any app and you search for a car. So that's what we have, but what we are introducing it's up in point geolocation app. So let's say you open our app, you open the maps map part and you can see where the car is located across your whole page. It's an open world map system, okay? So wherever the car gets uploaded from a seller, you can see from your perspective, it's located near 10 kilometers, five kilometers, or maybe your neighbor has uploaded it, okay? You can see it also as well. So then your car, buy it, then you, you initiate the conversation, you can listen to the car details. You don't need to go and scroll. You can just listen to what the car is about, what's his futures, what's his all. The AI uh, bot will tell you that, okay? And same at the same time, there's there will be an AI system, just like seller, we have it on buyer. So buyer in deal case also, and you can directly connect to seller as well here. You can directly connect by having his number and having his details. And then you can also opt for services. Let's say you want to make sure before that you get the car, the car is clean or you want to make any other operation, you can do it from our app, okay? And then the post-sale process, loan approved, verified, but seller is there or not, and RC transfer is the same, okay? Let's go to uh, service certificate. Yeah, uh, basically the uh, the buyer journey and seller journey, bo both are being connected and the middlemans are being kind of disconnected. That is the journey that uh, Ash has uh, provided uh, in the screenshots, and uh, which will reduce uh, like a uh, lot of uh, commission issues or, transparency issues that which we have and that journey is what he has shown in the services journey like uh, the service providers like uh, a guy who is sitting on the roadside and who is waiting for uh, some uh, issues that need to be fixed he is advertising more on uh, the google app like facebook ad campaigns and all but uh, those guys are sitting idle and not uh, getting enough business and we at the same time, the buyers also on the side, other side, like uh, the service uh, service seekers who are like uh, going from one place to the other place. Uh, if he has been struck, the first thing that comes is fear uh, into his head. So this particular fear factor and uh, the service uh, providers are being connected in a wise way, wherein like uh, both the parties can be advanced, uh, uh, get uh, take a benefit of the, the system. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what uh, what is the situation? Is let's say like there are a lot of services like across you you don't know. Even Google gives you old data of it. Like if you search car mechanic near me, it might give you places which are shut down. What we are trying to do is making all like, and uh, let's say there are, uh, let's say uh, a car wash near you, you don't know about it. He give you less price rather than the usually you go to. Okay. So what we are trying to do, we are bringing all the services across near you, far you or wherever you go on the map structure. Okay. So that you can see wherever you are going, there's a service which can, you can get at any time. Okay. So how does it work is basically uh, you, you, this is, of a service for a buyer perspective, I'm saying if you want to seek a service, so you can see the services, different type of services you can get, and you can get ask them for quote. Okay, I want to make sure my car is washed. How much you're offering, and you can ask for different people as well. So you can request a code, you can confirm order, and you can go get the service as well. And what we are giving is WhatsApp bot. 
bot support is our uh, basically a future which i'll come to that in the usb part that is in our usb part and service provider journey is simple they just need to get onboarded they have to register themselves and uh, they will be on our platform and they will be getting the same ai assistance that a seller is getting like on leads and all on quotes and all so that is a service journey to play. okay let's go to the next one yeah uh, when it comes to the revenue model uh, like a uh... Uh, revenue model, there are several uh, uh, points uh, where we can uh, bring the revenues into the system. Like uh, during the auctions, uh, the auctions are paid uh, visitors who are trying to bid on the cars. So that's uh, through the auctions we make it. And uh, when it comes to the seller, for selling out a vehicle, we are charging them like a $250, no commission zone. Uh, we And the buyers have been connected directly and uh, the AI bots help them to uh, save the sellers and buyers time. And when it comes to the loans, uh, the loans we have integrated with uh, several banks and uh, the banks are paying the commission three to 5%. And uh, when it comes to the dealers, the dealers are also like uh, using our softwares and uh, doing uh, their CRM. Either it can be like a, a AI chatbot, which are following up uh, their customers uh, who, who are coming into their lot. They are paying us uh, for the dealer. And when it comes to the insurance, you know, because these are all commissions that which we get. And when it comes to the service providers, if the service providers usually provide uh, their, uh, they try to advertise more on just dial or any other things, but uh, they are they are providing the leads, but they are not providing like a closed lead. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we are going to give them a, a direct closed lead. Uh, like uh, if a person stops in the middle of the car, if you type say help in the WhatsApp, he is going to be connected directly to the service provider with the quote and uh, he has been provided. So because of that, we are getting a uh, service provider's money. And uh, uh, like when it comes to, when all these parties are been in the ecosystem, we are tra trying to advertise uh, what left several products that are going inside the, the market uh, that is a service brand. And we are signing up with them and uh, trying to run a campaign for them with our users. Yeah, USP. so our USP is basically, we have two USPs we are bringing, which other platforms don't have as of currently, which is uh, basically there's one thing called sticks can sell. So what happens right now, if you try to sell your car on other platforms, you can, you will only be uh, visible on digitally. Your car will not get sold outside digital world. So what we are bringing, we have bring a QR code. You can get it from our app. You will stick on your car. So even if you are in a parking mall basement, if anyone can come, anyone can uh, uh, scan that QR code and you will be getting the details of the car. So it's called sell on Yugo, okay? What we are telling, trying to sell. So this is our one USP. You can sell your car anywhere across uh, India, like wherever you are. And next is service helpline. So what, what we are trying to do, we have all the service providers across Hyderabad. What we are trying to get them is, you just need to send help to our car extreme number. Then we will try to make sure you get connected to a service need, let's say your car is struck up, break down in the middle of the road anywhere, uh, and you don't have any help. So our car, this, you just need to send help and you will get all the uh, service providers who are trying to help you and you will get help instantly in the, in this process. So this is our USP, we have to use peace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you are stuck in the middle of the road and uh, try to help the line, uh, since uh, you guys have given a 15 minutes at any point, uh, like uh, we will share the number, our number, uh, you can uh, get benefit out of this particular service. And uh, at this particular point of time, you you can take the benefit and there is no cost to the buyer uh, service seekers or the service providers. We have uh, launched it. So we are heavily testing on this particular service. And uh, moving on to the market size, this market like uh, buying and selling of uh, cars and uh, services it is a pretty big market it's like a uh, tam is uh, standing at 143 billion dollars and it is going like a uh, 43 billion is like uh, basically uh, for services uh, and uh, uh, more than 100 billion is uh, for uh, car sales and uh, out of that, we are uh, looking at uh, like a uh, fifteen percent of uh, the total addressable market, and uh, that is standing at twenty one point five two billion. And we we are looking at uh, 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 some at uh, like uh, one point uh, one billion, around one billion. That is five percent of uh, the whole market. 
So the, we are aiming to grow uh, pretty fast, and we have like uh, the traction. So the traction wise, what we have is right now we have like more than uh, fifteen thousand hits on our websites. We are going keeping rapidly. As of now, we have eight k installs in our app, which will soon hit ten k. We have two thousand registers, more than two thousand registered users. We have two sixty dealers who wants to sell their car so registered across Hyderabad and two hundred service providers across Hyderabad. So we are in just one city, but we are growing. And uh, yeah, we keep on. So the tra traction projection at a year level is very like uh, drastic improvements. Like uh, we have started in one place and we uh, scaled to one uh, whole state, Telangana. And we are looking at other states uh, by the end of the year. And uh, the next five years, we are projecting at uh, like a 689 or 700 crores uh, uh, revenue is what we are looking at. And uh, what is the like a unique, uh, the, the competition in the car sale market is too heavy when it comes to like a Google ads or ad campaigns or anything, the cost to uh, clicks and cost to acquisition of uh, the customer is high. And uh, how we are achieving this particular co competition landscape is like we are asking the dealers to like um, uh, stick and sell the cars, uh, like uh, the barcodes on everywhere. And uh, dealers are so happy because they are, the AI chatbots are doing uh, half of their employees work work for them so they are onboarding with us and are trying to get a benefit out of this so, so across uh, Hyderabad uh, the entire uh, 280 or around 400 uh, uh, small and big dealers are there everybody has uh, uh, onboarded with us and they are started using it and uh, they are getting into the paid uh, customer service mode and uh, we are looking at uh, like a, uh, to raise around a three crore uh, pre-seed uh, round and uh, we are promising, like uh, even though it is like 5x, we are sure like we are seeing the numbers at uh, 7.8 CR in 12 months uh, uh, span. And uh, this is what we are seeing in, uh, uh, in terms of revenue and traction in two states of India. And we are like uh, looking at uh, like uh, we, uh, the, the journey, like how are we doing on time? Hope. My God. So on the roadmap, like uh, the first quarter, we have launched the product and uh, the second quarter we have tested, market tested and uh, got around uh, 280 dealers on that. And uh, we are going uh, with the auctions now in this particular month. And uh, we are providing uh, the services to the dealers and uh, heavy marketing is starting right now. And uh, at the same time, we are preparing for launch in multi-states uh, across, and uh, we are connecting with uh, original equipment manufacturers. That is like all the man, uh, like uh, all the uh, major brands. And uh, we want to go uh, pretty heavily because, like, uh, uh, we don't want to go slow. We want to go fast level, <laughs> right? Rather than other companies. That's what that's what we're trying to say. Yeah. And uh, this is about uh, the minds behind, like we are like a 12 members team and uh, we, me and Ash Gupta, we, I have 20 years of experience in uh, the retail car industry across the globe. And uh, we want to have everyone in India to have a car for, without losing uh, commissions to the middleman. And uh, Ash Gupta. Yeah. And I bring technology into the real time, uh, whatever is required on the product, we bring it on the technology side in the real time. Yeah. So that's what so yeah this is uh, our number where you can guys can reach back to us and uh, i know this is the education uh, uh, discussion so yeah uh, you guys like uh, any any of you have any questions shoot us shoot uh, back to us okay great uh, thank you so much for the pitch kiran and yash now you guys already have some traction right yeah, yeah. So have... when did you start your operation? Two months back. Two months back, that was what, May? You can say April. April, April. three months, three, four months. Yeah. So April 24, you started your operations. Okay. Um, What's the revenue that you've generated in the past three months? Uh, around one, one lakh. Okay. How many dealers do you have? 260 260 more than 260 actually we are getting them on daily basis yeah. uh, to be precise 282 yeah 282 how many of them are paying uh, as of now five because we are not a target yeah five five dealers are paying okay 
so how many service providers you have? 200 across Hyderabad. 200. Hmm. Okay, paying? Like screen, but paid, but they're not that uh, like much. Because as of now- No, we, we, we are doing a uh, free market testing. Currently and in we are not uh, requesting a revenue at that- uh, From the uh, service providers. Yeah. Correct. We, are, we want to market it first so that everyone knows about it first. And then okay. sure it works, yeah. And how many buyers you have on your platform? Around 10,000 uh, as of now. They have come, they have applied for loan, they keep on checking, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, so the marketing money that which we have spent, like, uh, is very less. And uh, what we have started uh, this month is like uh, we boosted uh, on uh, all the right. marketing Google platforms. Ads, Facebook ads. And uh, we started seeing like uh, around picture. 1 lakh impressions and uh, around uh, on, our ads. on a daily basis. Like we are seeing, started ads. seeing around uh, 6K users and all. But so, just in Telangana. Yeah. Sure. No, th that's fine. So we'll, we'll talk about these aspects uh, shortly. But I'm just trying to get the numbers correct so okay. i can probably give you a better feedback in terms of what you could potentially do and how you could potentially drive it further right so when you when you say you have got 10k buyers um so those are many... 10k visitors not complete like who has bought the vehicle they are checking the vehicles we have to uh, more than 2000 leads basically so out of these 10k visitors you have 2k leads correct correct 2k 3k leads 2k or 3k hmm. it's going between them right now it's like uh, it keeps on going 2200 something still 2200 okay so you've got 2200 leads in the past three months how many have you converted around 200 uh, leads have been converted uh, 265 directly cars. 265. 265 cars are sold right now 265 cars sold mm -hmm. okay how many sellers way, you have yeah. By the way, we doesn't make money on uh, like when a buyer when a buyer's bought the vehicle from the dealers. Okay, sure. So, what have any questions? Okay, how many sellers do you have? We have like uh, around uh, three hundred and twenty, around forty to fifty dealer, fifty private uh, buyers are there. Uh, private sellers are listed the cars, hmm. and uh, two hundred and eighty-two to be precise dealers are there. And uh, we have inventory somewhere around 4,000. Correct. And live is 3,978. Okay. So from the sellers also, uh, if I remember your revenue model correctly, you're charging something from the sellers, right? Yeah. Correct. So out of the 320 sellers that you have, and I'm assuming your classification is sellers is different from dealers. Sell, uh, sellers is like a private uh, sellers, like an individual person like me or you. Uh, those guys are listing those cars and trying to sell the car. Uh, we have like a 20 of them paid uh, sellers, like 500 rupees. The, to, to boost their car and get listed up in the search okay. part. So 20 paid sellers you have. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay. So... In your entire ecosystem, there are primary players. You've got your buyers, you've got sellers, you've got dealers, you've got service providers. Am I missing anything? Mm, yeah, I think uh, this insurance and loan loan providers. Insurance and loan. Okay. So let's just talk about insurance and loans numbers as well. How many people have actually, and I'm assuming these are the buyers who are looking for loans and insurance? Yeah, correct. Okay. So how many buyers out of the leads that you have, 2,200 or 265 cars sold? Um, how many of them have gone for loans or insurance? Three of, three of them has gone through the loan process. Because we just introduced loans last month. Yeah. Okay. And insurance? Insurance is also same. So whoever is going for, so all the three counts that you mentioned, they're going for loan as well as insurance. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Understood. So... so a product market fit is done on that on those ends okay so I, i'm going to probably give you my honest view and i apologize in advance if it comes out uh, a bit rude okay <laughs> but my my point being here is to add value to whoever is on the other side and 
sure, I would 100% accept that it's coming from my biases, my perceptions and experiences. So I would always leave it up to you to accept it, to uh, reject it, see however you see fit. Okay. Now, when I'm looking at these data points that you have, dealers, service providers, buyers, sellers, right? Um, I want you to walk me through in terms of the revenue that you are generating right now and the model that you have in place, even for a roadmap, so that I can get an understanding of what is the one persona or a couple of personas that you intensely want to focus on? Okay. So one, uh, one thing that we are focusing is on the dealer side. The dealers are being, uh, put into like a, uh, into the focal point and uh, they are being asked to put uh, their stick and sell functionality is being pushed onto them and they accepted it. And they are, their buyers are trying to scan that and uh, the EA chatbots are following up with them and uh, they, are, uh, they are trying to get a benefit out of them. So in terms of revenue, how uh, we started uh, the sales team and uh, we are seeing like a, uh, checks uh, that are coming from the dealers. Uh, those are like few, but uh, recurring bills of like uh, 10,000 to 40,000 uh, uh, rupees a month. So those are uh, flowing in. And uh, those uh, like dealers are very happy and they're asking like, is there anything that you can do for like improving uh, their their business. like uh, business, like their cars that are not getting sold. So we have introduced uh, the second persona that is coming is like into the auctions. So we are trying to bring uh, the auctions, like a uh, public auctions, like uh, whatever their inventory is there and they're ready to uh, uh, sell their cars pretty quickly. They are trying to ask us the certification on those cars and try to bring it to the public. So that is the second, uh, uh, second uh, persona or second revenue model that which we are looking at, which uh, we are bringing it, uh, we are focusing on those two areas. Understood. So what you mentioned, that is actually two different features that you are bringing in. Uh, the persona is only the dealer. So these right. five components that we mentioned, sorry, yes, just give me a minute now. So the right. five components that you mentioned, dealers, service providers, buyers, sellers, and potentially banks and NBFCs. Right. These are your personas. Sure. These are the kind of people Correct. you want to focus on. Correct. Okay. And, and buyer persona, like a person who, who is looking, like who has settled or might not have settled, but at let's say he has moved, right, to a new city. Now he wants, he has got a good job and now he's trying to get a car. So one person we are targeting like that. And if a person who is just want to get married and he wants to have a car. So these kinds of personas we are targeting as a buyer side. Understood. So you are actually, what you said is for a buyer persona, you gave me an ICP, ideal customer profile. Okay. okay. So these are different things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the persona, your actual um, value, the way I see it based on your numbers, it's coming with respect to the dealers. Correct. We are moving to correct. Yeah. Now, you may want to talk about the ecosystem as such. And again, sorry, I apologize. My camera is not working, so I'm not able to do a video. So, uh, uh, but my point was that if you're focusing on, instead of focusing on five personas right now, okay, I would strongly suggest to focus on one persona, which is the dealers. Okay. Um, if you can solve the problem for the dealers, right, then you can take this to the next level. Okay. Now, with respect to the dealers, now walk me through what are the top problems. Because in your problem slide, you have mentioned a bunch of problems. Okay. But they are spread all across. Now, as a small team, as a startup, my recommendation is always to focus on where the maximum value add is coming from. To you and to the person you are trying to serve. Sure. Right. And just look at the numbers, like you have got 10K visitors, you have got 2,200 leads, you have got 265 cars sold. So that's still decent enough. But the margin, I'm not sure what you're making on those 265 cars sold. You've got three people going for loans and insurance. So in my mind, the impression that the funnel that I'm looking at, 
So you're top of the funnel. So all of your marketing and everything else that you're doing, it's all mm -hmm. sitting at the top of the funnel, okay. right? What is your conversion eventual? The conversion is 265 cars sold and three loans and insurances. Correct. So loans and insurance is probably not your hottest item. As of now, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cars sold, again, if I'm looking at where is the buyer seller, right? So supply and demand. Demand mm. is the buyer, which is 265 cars. Okay. Right? The supply is either the dealers or the sellers. Sellers, you said 20. Correct. Right? Yeah. So sold, out yeah. of the 265 cars that you have sold, 245 cars have come from dealers. Correct. Uh, there are 4,000 cars that are coming from. No, no. Out yeah. of 265. So dealers. converted. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. So when I look at your demand, sure, you have to focus on buyer side. Right. But where is your hottest supply coming from? That's the dealers. Correct. Right. right? Now, if you look at your competitive slide, let's just pull that up as well. Yeah. One yeah. yeah. Now, if you look at this particular thing, and then you try and figure out what are the different... Uh, see, uh, one of those things that I would strongly recommend when you're looking at a competitive landscape, right? Instead of talking about features, talk about values. Okay. Right? What difference are you making? To whom? And there are very basic criteria. It's either time or money, or convenience, or something like that, right? Now, what you're doing to facilitate time saving, what you're doing to facilitate or optimize on price, what you're doing to facilitate convenience, what you're doing to go, uh, doing to facilitate serviceability. Yeah. Those are features. But at the end of the day, when I'm looking at this entire landscape, I will need two weeks to go back and do my research on this competitive slide itself and then come back to you that, okay, these are the points where you have misquoted, misrepresented, misled, whatever. I don't want to go there as a startup, okay. right? What I want to do is I, I want to give you a very consolidated view of what is the baseline value that I am adding. Okay. And what so you... is it that someone else is not doing? For example, let's just say car trade hmm. or cars 24 or spinny, right? Do they work with dealers? Cars twenty four and Spinny, no, they are not direct. Uh, they are not dealers. They okay. are them. In your in your six competitors that you have mentioned, okay. Now what I'm trying to do is give you guys a perspective that as a startup you are already stretched thin from different perspectives, mm -hmm. right? Instead of putting efforts on n number of places, put effort on one, crack it. And I, I heard Kiran say that you have achieved a product market fit. I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't say that you are there. You are near there at all. You're very far from it right now. Look at your funnel. Okay. What is the conversion that you have? Out of 10,000 buyers, you have sold 250 cars. Hmm. What, what what's that conversion percentage? Uh 10,000 out of 250. 2.5. Right. Okay, so do you think two point five percent of conversion could lab could be labeled as a product market fit? Uh, I would uh, tell you one thing. Like, sure. In starting time, we did not target buyer. We did not do marketing. The two fifty sure. cars sold. It got sold in a very short span of time. We were not running Google ads or Facebook ads. So that's why I we. Are, yeah. No, I understand that. But what I'm trying to do is that. Okay, let me ask, <clears throat> instead of giving you my opinion, let me ask you this. How do you define product market fit for yourself? So, so a product market fit is basically if a particular uh, point A to point B thing is working or not from the product itself. Okay, so that's just the sales cycle. That's not Correct. product market fit. No. You can... You can... Yeah, sorry, sir. Sorry to continue. Go ahead, go ahead, Yash, please continue. So I was saying like product market fit, what we have done is me and Kiran have gone to multiple dealers. It's starting, I'm saying. We have seen what their problems is, how they are, uh, like car trade is the most popular for, uh, in dealers uh, environment, okay? They don't go to Scars 24 Spinny Act. We have seen it, okay? So what are the challenges that they are facing? What what they are not, why their cars are not getting sold? We have targeted that on dealer side. Then we went to service provider sites. We saw that they are not even digitally there. So we are trying to digital there. 
okay and then we uh, do we saw that car wash is happening people are coming they are asking for help uh, on our platform so on services side we saw that product market sector testing and sales normal seller they are saying like you we normal seller usually goes to cars 24 or spinny or drone like these are the uh, three they go to and they themselves came they said okay you are giving me the option to sell the car which these guys are taking advantage of by giving them less price so we let their cars sold on our platform so that product market fit test on seller side now on buyer side uh, we saw we just uh, started one month ago to get what is going on okay then we saw that they are coming they are applying for loan we are giving them platform they are happy we have customer reviews on our instagram as well so that where there we did product market set test on our buyer side so on our four factors we have done it so that's why we are saying product market yeah. uh, the numbers are not speaking because yeah. we have just started in a very short time that's uh, what i'm saying for, thanks uh, for uh, detailing on uh, uh, like product market fit test uh, our assumption may not be the the right thing hmm. yeah i'll give you the <laughs> you can you, 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 i want to see your vision sure so everything that you're talking about and Notice how you have mentioned so many times that you have just started, right? So if, if I'm talking about a product market fit, why am I going and saying that I have just started? Okay. Product market fit is a point where when you talk about your product, right, you can show two things. One, decent traction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Decent traction could be defined individually for your company or, you know, as a standalone basis, you decide what is decent traction for you. Okay. okay. If you are telling me that, again, this is basic sort of conversion principles, if I may talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. If you tell me that we have a goal that on our, our platform, we want to achieve at least a 10% conversion that's what we will call a product market fit okay okay so you 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 won't be going back and talking about we have just started hmm. okay. right so if you you can't reach a certain point and say that i've just started okay okay either you are selling yourself too short or, or your milestones are too easy and you haven't reached a point where you've faced enough challenge to say that i've crossed something which is difficult to cross and product market fit is that point Okay. If, if you, unless and until you tell me that you've crossed a certain point, which was difficult to cross, I don't believe that you have reached product market fit. You have just started your sales. Correct. Okay. That's the simplest explanation I can give you. You have to go back and define and read more and understand more about what is a product market fit. How are you going to define it? And there is a very beautiful blog by uh, this guy, uh, the founder of Superhuman. Just go ahead and read it. Okay. You would love that explanation. Try and make sense of what he has written there. Um, then you would probably, then you would probably have to go back and define your product market fit first. Okay. okay. So what you've done is you have defined your sales cycles. You have seen initial traction. You have seen some people showing interest, some people converting. That's where you are at. It's very initial. Okay. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about the reason I picked up this competitive landscape slide, okay, hmm. I'm, I'm sort of doing a reverse. Um, engineering of the of your entire pitch deck because if you did not have traction I would have started with the problem but because you have traction it is important for you to understand where you are adding maximum value and, and which problems to focus on so that's I'm sort of moving from bottom to top okay okay so in this competitive landscape slide first thing what I would want to see the value not the features okay makes sense okay so like, yeah. I can give you one simple example. Let's just say that tomorrow Car Extreme achieves a certain level of traction, mm -hmm. Car Trade or Car Deco or Car 24 or whatever. They come to know that there is someone called Car Extreme. Mm -hmm. Right? How difficult would it be for them to do all of these things? Good. Right? They have deep pockets, which you don't. Good. Right? So you have to really, while... A lot of people will talk about building a moat or having a moat when you're starting a business, right? The way I see it is, is do you have enough clarity? If you don't have it in the beginning, a moat, right? You guys understand what's a moat, right? Did you say a moat? 
moat moat m o a t okay let me just explain so a moat is a point which is very difficult for someone to cross over you should have something that nobody else can easily replicate or do okay it could be a patent it could be an exemplary service it could be an exemplary supply chain whatever or exemplary things in the feature itself some sort of ip that you have created in your product whatever right it could be anything but that there should be a point which is very difficult for someone to replicate okay okay it could be a combination of things as well it doesn't have to be one thing alone mm -hmm. okay now the thing is that moat is not necessary to have over a period of uh, uh, at the beginning it can also be built over a period of time but to build it over a period of time you need that level of clarity makes sense your efforts your focus cannot be distributed across 100 different things because you see an opportunity don't go there because there is a cost to that opportunity hmm. right yeah. so there is this is something that we call as a opportunity cost analysis right so yeah. focus on the opportunity but also at uh, the cost right so when i'm looking at this particular slide i don't see any moat and i don't see the clarity to bring that moat into the system okay okay so <clears throat> so if you think about it right first all of these features change to values second all the competitors that you have mentioned they are already very prominent in other sectors where are they not prominent you have got five personas that we spoke about right you have we have got dealers service providers buyers sellers banks and nbfcs where are they not prominent that is something that you have to put down here and give any investor a view okay and yeah. that is where you should focus on right now i see that you have you have sort of got five touch points but your focus is not on any of them maybe it's there at the back of your mind but it's not coming out in your narratives hmm. makes sense makes sense right so focus on that and whatever whenever your values are coming down right maybe make it a 2 by 2 or a 3 uh, uh, two tables two, two charts of 2 by 2 to say okay. that values versus competitors and your personas versus competitors right depends on how you want to show it it's up to you okay but what i would want to see come out of this is that where is your stronghold where can you create a stronghold if you if you go and tell me that i'll create a stronghold on the buyer and seller side private buyer and seller side i would be very skeptical right. you don't have those deep pockets um and i don't see that clarity so i'm ex extremely skeptical to say that you will be able to do that uh without someone like any of these guys coming over and crushing you mm. right. so if your dealer is your strong hold right now you have got a massive dealer base 282 in 3 months of operations that's a very good number to have but you are not leveraging it you are not capitalizing on it correct right. figure out a way to capitalize on that yeah uh, this is where this is the focal point which we are making here and we are uh, breaking that uh, like uh, first time what we are done is like uh, we are focusing on what the dealers want so the dealer wants is like leads and dealers wants is like whatever the leads that they are getting from other competitors they are trying to put it into the car extreme and uh, the ai chatbot work for them and uh, the employees are uh, even though they are their dependency with the employees have been reduced and uh, their uh, lead conversion rate is increasing so yeah i see your uh, the dealer focal point which we yes. are focusing right now after like uh, uh, looking at all the features that which we have put on the application if some of them is showing us like a a growth pattern that is where we are focusing our energies on okay so that that's a good thing that's why i asked the uh, original question of what is your primary persona okay but i want to break this down even further for you okay because what you just said in parts it makes sense but i i'm still to hear from you anything that can help me understand that you have a clarity on how you want to run the product okay and i'm sorry again if i'm being brutal about it but 
I'm here for a very specific reason to add value. Okay. So let me let me help you understand why am I saying this. Okay. Now, if I were to only look at the dealer side of it, hmm. now let's go to the problem statement that you said. So in your slides, just go to, to the problem. Okay. Oh, one second. Or we can do back on yeah. yeah, this is the one. Okay. Now, all of these points that you have mentioned, look at this entire slide. Where do you see dealers? Sellers are the dealers. Sellers are both dealers and single individual sellers. Huh. But they are not dealers. Your primary persona, if you have broken the seller down into private sellers and dealers, you have created a category out of this, right? So you should not go ahead and assume that everything applies that applies for a private seller will apply for a dealer. They are different personas altogether. Sure. An individual and a company, right? So if your primary persona is the dealer, then what I didn't see was dealer written anywhere here and as a matter of fact you may what you've done is you've combined a lot of different things trying to consolidate mm. but consolidation doesn't mean clarity what i want to come out of this particular slide is clarity that you understand who you are targeting this for what is the problem that they are facing what i see is and that's why the opinion came that it's extremely scattered you, your energies are not focused you don't have clarity right yeah. so if i just look at the seller okay um market competition i don't know what that means paperwork management um okay fair enough paperwork management may apply for uh, private sellers as well as dealers price negotiation sure lack of value added services okay middle for dealer what is middleman commission i don't understand um trust yeah. establishing oh. okay uh, less educated sellers. Why, why is a dealer less educated? So you see what see what I'm trying to do is find out the holes in your story. Hmm. If I'm looking at just the seller side, like you mentioned, I don't see some of these apply to dealers. Right? So you have to rework this. You have to make it very focused that boss, here is the thing. I have a primary persona, which is a dealer. Yeah. Okay. I am working on solving the problems for the dealers. Now, Kiran, you mentioned a lot about your chatbots and this and that, right? But yeah. where have you mentioned in your this this entire thing that support is a problem? Or providing support is a problem? Or doing follow-ups is a problem? Closing deals is a problem. So the, the the thing that you are talking about four or five times in your pitch, there is no problem associated to that. You haven't highlighted anything in your narrative. Okay. Makes sense. So what, uh, uh, Amir, like, uh, what we have done is like uh, the problem statement that during our journey, like we have thought through like uh, at a high level, anybody who wants to sell the car, they want to put list a card from a WhatsApp, simple terms, like in, in common man terms. Like they want to list a card and try to sell it. The pre-sale process and post-sale process, Car Extreme does it. And during this journey, when we are aiming it for the common people who wants to, the people who are trying to sell the car, they are selling it to the dealer. A dealer is trying to make a commission or do whatever that is, or some investors investing on that particular car and trying to put it in the lot and try to sell it. Okay. So what we want to break this particular whole scenario is like the seller who anybody who owns the car, if the car extreme is unknown to them, they can list the car and try to sell it. And during this particular process, we will make it easy on the paperwork and make his uh, like a, a selling journey or buying journey easy. That is the vision and mission with which we have started this particular product. But I understand. Cost to, I understand. Cost to uh, the customer acquisition, cost to like a feature and all that has funneled us through the point wherein we have to focus on one particular area where uh, the revenue starts right the dealer is dictating the terms that's how 
the so it, the journey of this particular if you see this like we have started there and we have fallen here and we are focusing on one particular area just because the revenue is driving us there and now you are like uh, bringing us more clarity and uh, the values that which we have to put it uh, like a from a like a uh, back down approach sure. which now, let me let me just give you a very dramatic uh, example okay now think you are ss rajamouli okay you started making bahubali you ended up making say rrr okay mm -hmm. what are you going to show your audience are you showing me a rrr or are you going to show me a bahubali i mean rrr was a good film <laughs> <laughs> no i i'm i'm just giving you an example because yeah, sorry, uh, as a director you are the director <laughs> See, <kidding>. yeah <laughs> we, uh, you may have started at a certain place uh, okay yeah. but how is this relevant i don't want to watch a 6 hour long movie yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, even if you started with the vision of building a Bahubali, you ended up making a RRR. I want to mo know more about your RRR. Correct, correct. Because you were expecting Bahubali. Uh, got that. <laughs> so I, I'm not expecting anything. You are sitting in front of me telling me a story. And if you give me a six hour long story, I, I'm super confused that what is it? Is it a Bahubali or is it a RRR? Yeah, correct, correct. So, uh, this is how uh, the journey looks like. Uh, we have started, yes, exactly. You are Bahubali and ended up RRR because RRR is generated. <laughs> are for revenue. So the seller, uh, the dealers are picking us and been giving inventory. They are driving it. So, so do you do you recommend Amya? Like on a uh, serious note, like uh, do we have to like uh, go to the common struggles and try to focus on uh, the focal point because we started the product, but we ended up uh, with the tool that is required for the dealers. <laughs> I, I would I would again come to that because we haven't gone into the depth of the dealer problem as well. Okay. So far, what I've done is I have reverse engineered and I'm hoping that you realize where is your strength, where is your primary persona, where is it that you are adding maximum value and the entire story that you are telling me, it's not matching to the effort that where you should be putting in. So as a as an investor, if I were to just listen to your... 20 minute pitch actually you have to reduce that significantly yeah, yeah. okay so <laughs> yes so if i have to listen to your 20 minute pitch 20 25 minutes whatever right yeah. i will probably have a few follow up questions and i'm out yeah. i'm not going to give you a second chance i have and everybody you guys everybody who's, who's on this call please realize the gravity of the point that an investor listens to five, 10 pitches every day. You are, you have to stick out in my mind, in any investor's mind. And they should feel that out of the 10 pitches that I listened to today, car extreme was the one that really strikes out for me. Okay. If you are just, again, one of those pitches that, that are very forgetful, and you don't make any impression on me, I'm not going to give you a second chance. And it's a very risky bet. Right? So you have to really think about it from an investor's shoes. You put yourself there. Then try and think that, let's just, Kira, let's just ask you a question, right? You have got Yash and me and Raghav. All of us are coming to you. you and you have only 5 lakh rupees to invest. And you can only invest in one of us. What is it that you're going to do? You're going to invest in the person who gives you the best impression, who gives you the confidence and the belief that they will give you a 10x return out of this. Right? Correct. That's where you put your money. You're not going to chase, let's just say Yash is the most impressive guy. He's your CTO, you love him and he has got the best product. Now, why would you come behind me and Raghav and even if we be try and badger you every day and night and then try and messaging you, calling you, you just block us. No. You've already made up your mind. Uh, this is just nuisance to you now. Correct. Right? So my point here is change what you have written here. All of these are secondary items that you are doing to create and complete an ecosystem. But the focal point of that, of that ecosystem is the dealer. It's not the buyer. It's not the seller. It's not the NBFC. It's not the service provider. It's the dealer. Hmm. Okay. This is your story. Now you started with something. 
this is where you are at. Six months down the line, when you have more traction, when you have more observations, when you have more experience doing this, your story may change again. Hmm. So none of this is constant. And unless and until you're fixed on your story, you haven't reached your product market fit. You see how I'm just trying to tie the different points together. So you get a clarity and understanding of what is really there as a ground reality from an investor perspective. Okay. Makes sense. Now let's talk about your prime. Uh, okay. I'm hoping that we are aligned that dealer is your primary persona. You change to, you need to change the narrative and story. So go back to your solution. You will see that the solution is not applicable. Analytics and forecasting, sure. Customer support, sure. Um, certification, warranty, sure. Real time quotation, sure. What's about see, this? Is this is quite staggering because everything here applies for a dealer. Mm -hmm. But uh, customer support for uh, a seller. Uh, Amya, like uh, the, what is happening is like uh, the individual person, the cost to acquisition uh, for a common man to understand this particular product is so high. Like uh, the dealer is already in that arena, so he is able to grab it. But a Agreed. common man also can grab it and use it. But see, you're you're a startup, mm -hmm. right? Where are you putting your time, effort, energy? Say marketing point of view. And I'll again talk about this in a bit more detail. But all of the, everything what you have is limited. Correct. Right? You really have to focus very, very hard on what is it that, where is it that you can add maximum value. I understand the opportunity is there. Yeah. But like I said, opportunity cost analysis, you have to do it. You may want to do a 5 lakh rupees digital marketing campaign to onboard more sellers. But what can you achieve in those 5 lakh rupees with respect to the dealer? You have 5 lakh rupees. That's all. Where should sure. you put it? This is all down to prioritization. If, and, and as founders, if you don't have clarity, if you don't know how to prioritize, no investor will put in the money because you are going to burn it on unnecessary items. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So have that clarity. Prioritization is the key to startups. You will be doing 100 things out of 100 things. 10 will, you will feel important of these. Only two you will be able to do. Okay. Right. So now let's talk about the dealer's persona. Okay. The problem that you have first refine it, make it dealer centric. The solution that you have make it dealer centric. That way, when you're telling me a story, this is a storytelling exercise. Okay. Then the details will follow. Storytelling is your foot in the door. If mm -hmm. you can't get the foot in the door, no details will follow. Okay. Right. So yes. when you're telling me the story, tell me about the dealers. Tell me about the problems. Tell me about the solutions that you're presenting. Right. Okay. Then when you try and tie back those numbers that you have, that I have 280 dealers on board with my platform right now in three months of operation. Now that sounds impressive. Okay. Otherwise, it's just a figure on the dashboard. That's what it is. Hmm. If you And then you told me tell me that in three months out of these dealers with 4,000 car listings, I have sold 245 cars in three months. For a startup with limited means, that's an amazing number. But if you start going back to the to your buyer narrative and tell me that I had 10,000 visitors, I have 2,200 leads out of which um, I have sold 200, that's very less conversion. Correct. Right? So, but buyers are buying the cars, right? So, we have <laughs> buyers to... are buying the cars, true. <laughs> but then you're facilitating it. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? See, at the end of the day, where, what is it that you're raising the money for? You gave me the ask, 3CR, hmm. right? What is it that you're raising the money for? Probably most from dealer. So now if you, if you tell me that, and again, this is all about storytelling, that now if you're telling me that boss, you gave me this money and I'm going to put it in a, apply it in such a way in so-and-so touch points that I am able to improve the conversion for the dealers even more. Or I am able to get more qualified buyers on my platform. Hmm. That makes more sense. Right? 
but hmm. i'm not going to spend but if you tell me that you're going to spend my money on chasing individual sellers there are way too many platforms correct right and your conversion is horrible correct. so why focus why or at, even if you want to right if if you have a deal if you have a term sheet you have managed to get the funding and what not then if you if you if you are able to get your investor in confidence then you go ahead and do it but until then reframe from it mm. don't lie don't cheat <laughs> not the, yeah. not the story that i wanted to give but then everybody all your stakeholders need you need to take them in confidence before you take it forward correct correct right focus on where your maximum value is now let's just talk about dealers okay problem solution you are well versed you can write it down that's not a problem at all now let's go to your user journey this combined journey that you are telling me na sellers and dealers this needs to change you started with the point that through whatsapp you will be able to do a listing but now figure right. out a way where this can apply to a dealer okay you see what i mean uh -huh. this is not adding value to your story right now maybe a great feature maybe you have done exemplary work here but my hypothesis is or rather my belief is very very strongly as a matter of fact that no matter how good a product if you can't sell it it adds no value correct okay so maybe a very good feature but you need to figure it out how to sell it and how to put it in a story that will sell your business makes sense okay so refine this entire thing uh make it dealer centric and then your buyer centric city that that's fine as well let's just go to that so this is fine uh whatever you are doing now this is where you need to uh, go to the next slide uh services uh yeah services, services again at one of those additional things let's just move on from there unless and until you are able to give me a massive traction on services or even decent initial traction on services it's just one of those tertiary items your loans insurance your services your individual uh, sellers these are all secondary items to me right now now Makes sense. this business and revenue generating model right hmm. focus on dealers and insert a buyer thing so you have got right now you said that you are not charging anything for the buyer but i'm seeing buyer 250 per auction now you have to talk about auctions as well you haven't focused at all on auctions you just mentioned mentioned it in the passing that okay we do auctions or oh, what is auctions how much value is it generating why are you doing it so when you look at your business strategy right what value is an auction adding have you done it what are the numbers what are the metrics that you have pulled out of your uh, auction how many cars did you sell in your auction okay so see if you were a pre seed startup right mm. i wouldn't be grilling you on the numbers but you are you are generating revenue you have traction mm. if you if you are not on top of of your numbers and your numbers don't give me the confidence my assumption would be that you don't have clarity in terms of what you are doing so you really need to be very very sure what numbers you are putting why you are putting it there and how will you justify the entire questionnaire that will be coming around it mm. okay don't just put anything there because you think this is something that you can do put what you can do right now or what you're doing right now and what uh, of which you are making revenue correct so the, make uh, another slide say, yeah. saying that road map we will be generating revenue out of these and these items okay sorry you were saying something kiran yeah uh, this is like uh, the dealer centric right uh, that is a good uh, focal point which we yes. we accept totally and uh, that is also like if i put 5 lakhs i'm getting 10 lakhs straight to the equation i can see it at the same time these are like uh, the dealers who are asking for the auctions and uh, those auctions are like uh, whoever are the 10000 visitors right we are going to run a campaign against them and uh, invite them auctions like uh, th these dealers are trying to put a uh, 100 vehicles a uh, certified vehicles try to ask us to uh, run an auction on them 
which is like a, they are giving a two percent of like a whatever the money and so, the two lakh even so that is how we we are gaining the traction from the dealer and dealer is driving it and dealer is giving us like a uh, like the fuel that is required and we try to articulate that in the revenue model but yes. how to present it is what have you done any options uh, we have done a sample option, but not real time option. Fair enough. You have done a sample option, right? But not a paid one. Correct. Okay. Pull out those numbers. What are what, or at least give me those numbers. What did you see in that option auction happen? How many cars listed? How many buyers coming? How many conversions happening? Do you have those numbers? Uh, no. So you need to be on top of those numbers first thing. If you are mentioning auctions, even okay. if it's a POC. Okay. You need to be on top of your numbers. Okay. Okay. And the rest of the items, clean it up, make it dealer centric, figure out if you can monetize buyers. If you can't, that's fine. Because on the dealer's side as well, if you are able to make significant revenue, see, you have got a recurring revenue coming, 5K per month that you've mentioned, right? Correct. Then if an auction happens or a per car sale commission happens, that's an additional revenue. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of put it together from a dealer perspective. Now, if your dealer is your primary persona, then what are the problems that the dealers are facing? So when I said that, go back to your problem slide, right? Now you have to be very, very crisp about the problem for the dealers. You okay. might want to distract yourself by saying that, hey, sellers face this problem, buyer sales uh, face this problem, service providers face this problem. But they are not your target persona. Not right now anyway. Mm -hmm. Focus on one thing. And then list it down. Okay. Now, yeah. when you talk about who are the players, if you focus on dealer as a primary persona, who are the players in your ecosystem now? Primary players. Buyers, dealers. Correct. Now, what you haven't given in this slide is your GTM strategy. What mm -hmm. is your G team strategy? How are you reaching out to these guys? How are you going to convert them? Mm -hmm. So that is a standard marketing campaigns that are no. being executed, right? No, 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 no. That, see, that's that's where the problem is. That standard marketing is not something that works most of the times. From mm -hmm. a GTM perspective, you need to be very careful in terms of what are your channels that you are identifying. You can't spray and paint and then try and figure out, boss, I have 10 lakh rupees, I'll do uh, social media marketing on all the platforms that are out there in the world and then try and figure out where the conversion is coming from. Mm -hmm. There has to be a strategy to it. Correct. Right. Uh, when so, it comes to strategy, like, uh, do you, like, uh, like when it comes to... Uh, like uh, those are like uh, the tools that which we are using like if we get into the details like seo is a part marketing is a part like google uh, marketing is another part meta and uh, yeah. all those are being like uh, we are uh, have like a personas defined and the brand is being defined and what what we are trying to achieve and the, on a daily basis if I, we are I, I, so those are the like a uh, complete uh, uh, detailed strategies of marketing that yeah. Uh, we have, but not 100% clarity, but we are trying to uh, learn based on how the response is coming. And I don't know how to put it onto this particular uh, deck. So what you have mentioned is all the distribution channels that are possible. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not a strategy. Mm -hmm. It's all the options that are there. Mm -hmm. If I have to ask you for a strategy, then you have that it needs to be a lot more nuanced than what you've just told me. This is mm -hmm. the bucket list. And this is a major mistake that everybody when it comes to GTM and marketing does. You cannot go and say that I will put 10 lakh rupees into five different channels and then try and figure out where maximum thing is happening. What, Where is the research? What have you done so far? Mm -hmm. What is your observation? Who have you spoken to? So essentially it comes down to two things. Your lack of research, your lack of clarity. You don't know how to market yourself. You don't know how to sell. You don't mm -hmm. know how to create the top of the funnel. Correct. That we are learning and uh, we are seeing the attractions that which is coming. 
and uh, those are all the leads that dealer wants okay yeah. if the dealer is happy with uh, like uh, seeing 100 uh, uh, buyers on a car we are done with our job see uh, again the point is that you have to figure out are you a service provider to the dealer or as a product do you some do you want to do something with the marketing meaning are you only generating leads for the dealers or you are you generating leads for your platform what are you doing with respect to your gta mm -hmm. right and these are two different questions you have to understand the difference first mm. sure one fulfills the other but these are two different questions right so right. my point is that you need to go ahead and figure out your gtm strategy don't talk to more people try and figure out how to create a gtm strategy in the first place don't put your money everywhere mm -hmm. okay um okay let's move on to the next slide please uh our usp service helpline sure easy buy and sell sure see this easy buy and sell easy easy sell right stick scan sell that's a good thing but you haven't sold it enough you need to figure out a way to sell it more okay right i have a question on this as well so mm -hmm. i have let's say let's say a, a and i'm assuming this is for what private sellers no this is for both for anybody okay. who wants to and sell the car where will you put it It's, the dealers are putting it on the banner or the front mirror okay. on the car so how is this applied to a individual seller so individual seller like uh, say he is driving the car and he wants to sell the car and uh, he lists the car on the uh, car extreme he gets this particular scan code sticks it drives anywhere whoever looks at this particular car they try to scan it and buy it that's how it is so how is this very different from providing a link to your listing because link can't be like put on a windshield <laughs> so I that's know, what, I mean, again windshield is very different i'm talking about individual sellers right now yeah uh -huh. i'm an individual seller to stick on their car only they will stick on the windshield. just right. like fast tag they will stick this so my point here was that when you are trying to sell it right mm -hmm. you have to provide these things you have to tell these things that how to use it right because that you are essentially you are a painter uh, rather i am a painter you are narrating to me to draw a picture in my mind for your business mm -hmm. but if you don't tell me a certain components and you you want me to draw a, a mountain and a proper valley and what not and if you don't tell me there are any trees i'll not be drawing any trees So it should be written or something like point note. Okay, point note. Yeah. Uh, so but, uh, agree, Amir. Yeah. Like uh, we want to present it in such a form, like a uh, it's easy to grasp uh, by a common uh, person, like a investor, basically yes. here, like a uh, who can understand, like uh, hey, selling uh, is made easy by car extreme. All they have to do is. print a scan code and stick it and sell it like right. like a paytm yeah. so right. yeah so that that so when you kind of a message or whatever the diagram that is showing is not articulating enough point taken correct so when, and when you focus on your dealer persona let me ask you this i have 100 cars am i putting 100 of these qr codes yes how, how will my showroom look they they look fantastic and uh, we have like a uh, adaptability across like a uh, more than 150 dealers and uh, more than 1500 cars uh, we have car extreme uh, scan codes everywhere better put a picture of such a glass panel or showroom okay yeah. that will yeah. add more value right okay So, so try and figure out how you can sell it better 
correct correct what is happening is like uh, when these guys are sticking uh, this particular scan code immediately like the moment anybody comes in uh, to their showroom and try to scan this particular code the owner who is sitting in the uh, inside the room who is like sweaty with uh, one crore or two crore property he is getting all the leads and he is seeing like mm, i got a uh, buyer i got a buyer i got a buyer so he is happy with him and he knows how to figure out how to connect uh, those buyers and to the cars right so he is expert in that area but we are bringing this particular solution to that uh, the car dealership or the we call uh, dm dealer so manager the way i see it kiran is this can be made further uh, better mm-hmm. okay think about it this way as a buyer i'm going to a car showroom and i've got 100 qr codes to scan every time i'm going and scanning a qr qr code how will that look sure um, i mean physically sure possible but then that's not the most convenient user experience for the buyer no, what is happening is like the buyers are showing interest to scan it just to because to listen the details of the car the moment they scan it uh, the, all the details have been are uh, been given to them so they are accepting that particular one and they were seeing like a uh, comparisons on the prices and uh, they are seeing uh, they are I mean, here you are give comparison uh-huh. how how, how like uh, they, what i'm saying is like uh, they are going from car to car right so say for example artiga two cars are there and two cars they are listening both the conversations on these cars and they are comparing in their head and not the tool is not giving them but they are uh, they are comparing and uh, they are going it is as if a dealer's employee who is coming to them and trying to explain to them like what is going on uh, on that particular car which they are interested in the tool is providing all the information to them understood understood okay but um, my point was just try and figure out how we can represent this better here okay uh, sorry in the interest of time let's move to the next one that's fine uh, next one uh, okay this is fine as well uh, next one so there is a lot of grilling that can happen in your financial slides as well um, but too early to comment right now uh moving on to the next one yeah so what you have done here is that you have asked a uh, amount but what i don't know is where you are spending it okay now this this breakdown that you have given me it's distributed so mm-hmm. i i don't know what where exactly from your business perspective it is going okay okay right so okay. generally yeah. what we prefer is to give a breakdown that it is going in technology it is going in marketing it is going in so and so. okay makes sense okay so that is something uh, that i would want to see as well now revenue over 12 months um yeah sure i mean <laughs> this is a projection anyway so most people are not going to pay a lot of attention to it um especially because you are you have traction so you need to show something that what is it that you are doing right now that would give them a confidence that you can get there okay right so this this blue circle that you have right mm-hmm. that's just i know where you are spending the money uh, in terms of the persona as such the, the definitions that you have given but okay. i don't know what is exactly that you are doing with it mm mm-hmm. right um so this this can be optimized even more okay um okay uh, next do we have anything else roadmap is fine uh, public listed company is way too far in 5 years very doubtful uh but okay i mean don't don't go there try and figure out uh, something else you know showcase more value uh, public listed is is way far right now you have to survive that long first Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what else? Do you have anything sure, else? Sure. Like uh, what we are seeing is, if you are putting, like I am an investor myself. Okay. Uh-huh. I am putting ten ten lakhs, and I am able to take a uh, fifty lakh. That's how I five x times. Sure. It's straight equation with this particular tool. I am able to like I 
we try to put this particular tool and we are able to get the traction we are able to see it and uh, we are uh, want to scale across right with not like 10 lakhs 20 lakhs but put like more money into it and to the marketing avenue 80 percent of it and uh, take the money that's how i'm looking at it and we are seeing the revenue also <laughs> see the thing is that every yeah. startup out there mm-hmm. every I, and I, I mean to say like literally 99.9% of the startups, they give massive numbers. Uh-huh. But massive numbers are not believable. So as an investor, when I'm looking at things, if you're giving me projections, I'm not looking at projections. I, right. I know you have inflated it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, so, I, I, in fact, here I deflated. <laughs> you may think so, but going from a revenue that you have right now to a revenue that you have projected in 12 months, what is the multiple? Uh, what's your revenue right now? It's 1 lakh. 1 lakh. So you're talking about 7,000%? Yeah. See, simple maths, right? If we have like a 100 dealers and like 280 dealers, out of that 100 dealers are ready to pay 10,000 but we want to bring the traction to them and then only take the money. We are holding all the sales people, all the sales team to just to, to collect the money from there. Okay, And uh, there is only one guy who is bringing the leads and the, he, they are like a, they are the Olex or uh, Cartrade or the two guys and there is a frustration uh, of their own. And uh, that is what we have overcome with, with the tools uh, that they are provided, which we have provided. And uh, so the, this is in simple terms, right? So if we are seeing like uh, around 100 dealers, uh, 100 dealers who are ready to pay, we want to go with them. And we want to provide, uh, we want to, like uh, these dealers, how they work is, yes. like if one solution is working for them, meaning like uh, 100 uh, uh, leads are there and they are able to sell the car, and uh, out of 50 cars, if uh, previous to car extreme, if they are selling only 10 cars, now they are selling 20 cars, they're ready to give whatever we ask. That's how I can put it. I know, I, I get that. But those numbers will not correspond to the 7.8 CR number. And I'll give you a very simple math as well. Like you said, right? 100 dealers. You, the price that you mentioned is 5,000 rupees per month. Right? Right. So 100 into 5,000. That's what? 5 lakh rupees a month? Yeah, but- Correct. That Correct. gets you Correct. to that gets you to sixty lakh rupees a year. Correct. Okay. Even if you sell hundred cars, and let's just say that the percentage you mentioned three to five percent, right? Your average car price is say what? Let's just say ten lakh rupees. Okay. So five percent of ten lakh rupees is what? Uh, Fifty thousand rupees. Correct. Okay. So you said uh, fifty thousand into hundred again. Mm-hmm. That's 5 CR. Mm-hmm. Okay. So 5 CR plus 60 lakhs. That's what you're looking at. Right. So 7.8 CR, even in that math. Right. I'm sure you have got other components. Right, right. Uh, those are the components. And when it comes to the dealer also, the dealer base minimum price is 5K. And uh, that is uh, just providing the leads and uh, just uh, trying to uh, sell it online. And uh, getting the leads is uh, what is for which we have but uh, there is a pricing model of over a three per three months period when we have uh, what we have learned and what we are seeing is like uh, there are different uh, 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 pricing models into which we have put it and uh, those are the numbers that which we have and uh, that one whatever we are talking is one state and uh, what you have calculated is for one state and uh, we cal- the 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 uh, PPT is showing uh, like a two states, like a sure. we want to extend it to the another state too. Okay. Sure. But you have to showcase all of these things in your slides. So mm-hmm. a, a dealer value add slide, a dealer pricing strategy, a dealer conversion strategy, all of these things need to come into the picture. Makes sense. Right. So, I mean, there is a lot of clarity that needs to be brought out. How did you get to this number? Right. So all of those things will have to come into the picture. But at the same time, one of those most important things that you need to figure out is that when you're running your operations, how are you going to build your moat? How are you going to build to build your defensibility? Mm-hmm. If, because quite literally six months down the line, let's say Cars24 sees that car extreme is doing so well, doing all of these things, 
they will start doing it themselves how will you survive correct that is a, a challenge also there uh so my point yeah. is that you have to think about this it, it, most people will ask you for the defensibility most we, people will say that there is no defensibility in this business mm -hmm. i personally think defensibility can be built but then as a founder you need to figure out how correct correct uh, the defensibility is simple in terms of technology the technology cost that uh, whatever they are putting and uh, the cost is easy, the... Kiran. Uh, it is easy it is a one point uh, that uh, which we started with we thought like it is the biggest thing but uh, we are seeing it as a like a uh, one of the <laughs> like mistake which we have done yes so i wouldn't call it mistake let's just say it's a learning um, but when when people talk about technology unless and until you are telling me there is a certain patent and i see that patent adding value any technology is easily replicable mm -hmm. right so so figure that out for yourself as well okay so yeah i mean that's the long story short that's my feedback that's my input um take it for yourself in terms of how you want to take it yeah 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 i um, mean yeah, like uh, what uh, we are also scratching our head is like how to present this into this and what i have personally uh, seen myself after the clarity that which you have given is the dealer problem and uh, the dealer focus and revenue model you can do 5 lakhs with 5 lakhs whatever investment that you want to make uh, i have to focus on showing this as a my story instead of like a big picture even though the picture the tool itself the product itself can go n number of directions but uh, what is the focal point is what i got uh, out of this one and a half right so right now focus on execution heavily okay figure out how you are going to make this reality come true and mm -hmm. minimum cost my recommendation don't raise anything if you don't really need to okay at this point of time figure out how to build a business once you build a business once you get a name for yourself investors will come themselves perfect okay but first most important thing people chase money they, they think that taking investor money they can build a business no you can't business mm -hmm. building is very very different from building a product you can build a product but building a business is a very different thing it's a different beast altogether you know building a product is your house dog but okay. building a business is your jungle wolf and Correct. a pack of it right <laughs> you are learning after <laughs> burning the money we are learning <laughs> right yeah uh, but yeah i mean that that's that's about it from my side um if you have any questions happy to answer anybody else has any questions happy to answer them no it's a great discussion uh, i would like to open the dais for other people who wants to ask me questions i'll be happy to answer it. ravi santosh rohit then uh, whatever the presentation that i have given is not enough i can take that <laughs> so i actually as i do sorry yeah tagav that's what i was going to yeah. say in the chat i see a few questions yeah. Yeah. uh no. archana is asking so this is b2c any brainstorming scope to transform that into b2b2c so actually this is exactly what we discussed um right now the focus was everywhere so my point of view also came into picture that make it b2b2c focus on dealers who would actually do the conversion yeah it's a b2b2c uh, B2 to model is that the dealers are also putting the customers are also putting so the customers also like are trying to uh, buy the cars uh, so we we are at b2b2c to B2 to but uh, based on the discussion now uh, we will focus on like uh, the b2c part uh, and see how uh, uh, we can get the traction <laughs> good Actually, question thank you b2b2c is what you need to focus on so focus yeah. on dealers which is eventually going to get to the conversion so it's b2b2c correct 
uh, Archana, do you want to unmute yourself and yeah, yeah. help me uh, understand? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Thanks, Amiya. Um, thanks, uh, Kiran. I think um, that's what I meant. And also, uh, when you uh, define it as a B2B2C, right? Uh, how will, um, you know, the GTM differ for both sectors, B and C, differently? Or will that be a single channel or two different channels running parallelly to get interaction from both? That's a very so good question. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Achana, thank you for that question. Uh, we are seeing like a, there are two different channels, mm -hmm. like a, the sales team uh, who are trying to get uh, the uh, B2B part, the dealer's part. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a, that is like basically trying to go to like the sales team is going to the dealers and trying to get uh, their inventory first and uh, trying to explain uh, how this particular one. And uh, when it comes to like uh, the other channel, the customer channel, that is where uh, uh, Amir has uh, shared like uh, how we are making a common mistake across uh, like uh, how to uh, without doing a strategic uh, market approach we are trying to get uh, traction on the customers still we are getting attraction uh, we have to uh, also focus on that marketing uh, side correct um, so all right um, that's where i was thinking about uh, even when it comes to pr right uh, that uh, that can't be uh, same thing catered to both the segments and should be really, um, you know, efforts put in there. Yeah, a uh, follow-up question that I have is regarding tech that you have mentioned that is chat GPT, right? And uh, in the tech that you walked us through, um, uh, the, the uh, WhatsApp bot, I just wanted to understand various scenarios that it can deal because uh, chat GPT is not necessary if your, uh, uh, you know, the customer's questions are very pretty, you know, straightforward that are just related to your uh, card spec or things like that, right? So why is that tech? Because um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm even just thinking out loud that does it even matter to an investor, uh, the tech uh, evaluation and even the amount that will be spending in there? Correct. Uh, so what uh, we have done, why it is important, uh, what um, made us important and uh, why we have put this, like uh, if you are, uh, if you, your car is being struck, right? And if you have a few questions, like what is going on in the particular car, and if you are chatting with uh, uh, on a helpline, it will automatically, the, the data that which we are feeding it, it will give you like uh, most of the answers. Okay. Apart from that, if you are looking immediately, like a, if you are sitting in the home and trying to look at uh, in that particular scenario, that's perfectly fit. And if you are looking for like a, the scenario where you are uh, stuck in the middle of the road and you are looking for a towing service or like any other mechanic uh, really who can help you out, the AI, what it does is basically try to find out uh, the location nearby and who can fit uh, these particular scenarios in the last few cases. It will study by itself and give you like a, what is the price that it uh, go, the, this particular uh, service seeker can benefit out of it. It tries to talk to the, like, uh, the service providers and uh, connect uh, that service provider at, and uh, try to take those quotes and give it to this particular one. So the, all this is happening on, based on the data analysis that is happening. That's where uh, we, uh, and it it should evolve, right? It should not be static. And what you are saying, uh, Archana, is like, why this particular one? When you just try to get, a, say, for example, like, uh, uh, like a service provider number and uh, try to deal with personally with him, then why to use this particular technology? Mm -hmm. The technology has been put, and the, there is a level like uh, the basic scenario which you have uh, mm -hmm. is also been covered and we are covering a number of things. Mm -hmm. So I think these are not covered in the deck, right? I mean, just I was trying to understand um, the tech capabilities over here. And also there are a lot of privacy concerns also involved in that, um, you know, because you, uh, you would be... Um, feeding in a lot of your dealers or even sellers um, PIIs into it, right? So uh, a few yeah. uh, things when, around that. When it comes to the privacy, like, uh, uh, yes, Sachana, like uh, the privacy is like uh, the, the service uh, providers who are advertising their uh, data across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones uh, we are trying to be oh, working on that. So uh, there is a less privacy over there. 
Oh, all right. Okay. So it's more like a agenting fra agentic uh, framework rather just a bot. I mean, you have uh, oversimplified it, just calling it as an ordinary bot. I think emphasizing on it something uh, matured than the bot that would um, be interesting. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank all you. the best. Yeah. Thank you, Archana. Nice yeah. questions. And a uh, few more questions. Ashok. Yeah, Ashok, I see like. Uh, hey, yes, uh, yeah, I just replied to one of the texts that I saw. Uh -huh. I don't know if, if that makes sense. Uh, you can share your uh, thoughts on that, on the point that I wrote. Yeah, I'm just looking. If you can uh, talk on that, uh, we can discuss about it. Like, uh, uh, that is a Yeah, really... yeah. Uh, I mean, I just saw a comment from um, uh, Rohit Rao, uh, where he was suggesting that, you know, uh, uh, walking around the showroom, scanning each one of the cars uh, would make the process tedious and difficult for uh, some uh, for the buyer. So instead, you can put out one uh, QR code where it, uh, the buyer can scan and see all the listings in one shot. So, uh, so my thought on that, I mean, uh, on a surface level, it looks, uh, I mean, it makes sense for me also as the moment I read, I felt like, yeah, it makes sense. Then I probably kind of put myself through the uh, journey. And then I feel like, again, it would look more like a website listing where that's what the traditionally everybody is doing. Right. So then there's no, so then your idea doesn't stand out. Then it doesn't uh, make anything different from what uh, others are already doing. So if I'm a buyer, uh, I would be more interested in just scanning the car that I like and see the details, not scan the whole thing and then go through 10, 100 cars and then, you know, shortlist from that. But that's what my thought uh, on that. Yeah. So what is happening is like, uh, yes, the buyer will not be scanning like every car. He might have a one particular make and model and uh, his requirements. And he wants to like uh, scan on that particular car or a few cars like that and uh, try to find out more details on that. Okay. The reason why we have not been asked to put one single one is like if the moment uh, a buyer comes to a dealer slot and uh, try to scan one thing and uh, just uh, try to see whatever he wants uh, on all his cars on the dealer's cars, he can uh, he can look around and he will walk out. It looks uh, so odd for the dealer to accept our software. Why this particular guy has come in and uh, left? Even though he is doing activity online, but this is like a, uh, the dealers are saying like, a, let's put it on all, let uh, the deal, whoever wants to, whatever the, uh, uh, the buyers want to do, let them do it. Not put one scan code uh, in front of like a, just across the office and uh, try to scan it and uh, let him do it. It's like a, uh, an example. It's more like you're, you know, diverting somebody to a website. That's it. Right. Scan our website and see the products available. See the see the products available. At the same time, these uh, dealers are getting the uh, the WhatsApp numbers uh, of uh, the buyers, so they can follow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank this you. This is one of like we are mind boggling on this particular thought process also. Like, uh, but the dealers are we want to help the dealers also. Like, uh, make uh, their customers who have come to their lot. To stay there, not to run away with it, even though they are doing the job. You know, just a small like suggestion, like you know, you, you could try to go midway, like some something like, for example, if I scan a car, if I'm I'm probably interested in that car, like you know, like like the it's an SUV or a hatchback or whatever it is, you might have like a section below that saying that you might also like, and then you can show like a few options, and and that, that's the right. same same car dealer, right? So that would prompt them to go and look for that particular model somewhere else, and they can look into more detail. That's a feature that is already there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thanks a lot for everybody for joining in. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Yash, thanks, thanks, Kiran, thanks, Anya. Thanks for everybody for joining in. So, this is uh, this has been one of the longest sessions we've had, and I, I'm glad that it was a very productive session as well. Uh, so, for anybody else who's interested in in offering, you know, like coming to the pitch and, and delivering your own pitch for your own product, idea, or whatever it is, please uh, go to go to the startupclub.info and you can you can sign up for the form and we'll reach out to you and we can schedule a session where we can uh, arrange a session for you uh, in this manner so you can get benefited from from the whole thing
So with that, I would uh, like to close it here, but un unless Kiran, you have something else to say. Uh, thank you very much for your time, everyone. And uh, Amir, yeah, like, uh, thank you for focusing us back onto where, uh, where we are spending the money. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, for, uh, try to modify our pitch around uh, that area. And uh, uh, thank you all uh, for great questions. We will uh, try to focus, focus it and uh, articulate in that manner. Sounds great, Karan. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so thank much, you. everyone else. Thank you. Bye. Have a good Thank day. you, guys. Bye.